Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Fanatic News, and I'm Joe Boric, a.k.a. Pro Joe, and this is going to be a quick NHL trade deadline report where I react to the trades this far in a short, quick video. The only reason we're going to go back to the trade from January 19th of Greg Pattern for Ian Cole is because of how it's going to affect a recent trade we got to. That was obviously just a swap of defensemen. Um, Ian Cole and Greg Pattern are not very pivotal guys for each other team. Cole probably now that he's still actually on that team, might have an impact for the Wild. More so, obviously, than Patterson, but that was more of just a swap trade. The big trade that obviously happened early in the season that since I already reacted to it in a video, all I have to do to say about it now is it was just good for both sides. Roslovich got to go back to his hometown of Ohio. Line got to go somewhere else, get a change of scenery. Dubois got to go somewhere where his father's in the organization with the minor league affiliate of the Winnipeg Jets. And they got a third round pick, and now the Jets are looking really good. They're churning. They're in third place in that division. So that seemed like a very good deal. Um, <clears throat> since then... A trade that was pretty smart in the middle of February with the Senators bringing back Ryan Dezingle. Just because even if you were have, say, Ryan Dezingle just for the rest of this year, um, for the Ottawa Senators, that's still good because he has familiarity with that city, familiarity with that club. Uh, having somebody like that come in with those young players of the Stutzlas of the world, uh, Josh Norris and others, Batherson, th that's just a really good guy to be able to bring back in as the Hurricanes then got Cedric Paquette and Alex Golchenyuk set back their way. Uh, Paquette, someone that the Hurricanes can actually use in Golchenyuk, who they just immediately flipped um, to Toronto for a young forward and a young defenseman, which I think was honestly, since Carolina's always been a good management organization, them doing well by him, because Toronto seems to be actually working with Golchenyuk. Stuff I've read from him up there, um, from articles I've read, seem like he's getting the right mindset going. Seems like that team might be churning and getting the, his motions churning in the right direction to get him really going, because he really knows this is pretty much his last shot. Um, when it comes to that, yes, he has a mental skill. Yes, he was drafted high, but he hasn't shown it yet. And he knows this is really one of his last shots. And it seems like he might be taking advantage of that. And Toronto might be the city that kind of lights a fire under his ass and lights a fire in his belly and gets him going. And that will be good for him if that's the case. I think Paquette, a guy that can play center and forward, though, is also a nice add for Carolina. You can never have enough good people with experience, especially guys that have played in the playoffs a bit, um, when you're trying to make a playoff run yourself. Um, obviously, the March 20th trade of Jonas Johansson for a six-round pick was just a holdover for Colorado, um, as we're going to get to a trade later. He's a solid uh, him or Hunter Miska or solid third-string goalies, whoever you want to pick through there. But that's really what they are, obviously, where um, they brought in another goalie that we'll get to soon as we move down the trade list. That is really going to obviously be their backup to Phil Grubauer, who's emerging as a potential Vezina candidate this year. But Buffalo sent Eric Stahl to Montreal for a third-round pick and a fifth-round pick that they received from the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, this was a very smart trade because, yes, he played in Buffalo. I know some people post on social media and all that, oh, well, he played in Buffalo, so how would a contending team want to trade for someone from Buffalo? Well, Florida just got Brandon Montour, too, in a trade that we'll eventually get to. So, obviously, contending teams do want to get guys from Buffalo because they're good players. They're just playing for an absolute shite franchise. So... Um, if you actually go somewhere where you're actually kind of put in the right spots, coached up great, in a good um, mentality state because you're actually in a franchise that's there for you, run for you, and tries to put you in the best spots, which is not Buffalo, as we all know from Jack Eichel, um, I think he's going to do really good in Montreal and already has integrated pretty nicely, so I think that was a smart trade back on the 26th. A smart trade for the Kings, definitely, because they have Grunstrom and some other guys that can be scrappers out there in the ice, but they don't have one that's kind of a veteran that's already proven himself in the NHL to be that scrappy player that can score. Getting Brendan Lemieux for a fourth-round pick was a nice guy to bring into your organization. I think the Kings do develop guys pretty good. Their team I used to cover for Overtime and Rogues, that's a great site you can check out. I just got busy with other stuff and don't do stuff as much... Um, for um, the writing side of the Kings and other stuff over there, but um, he's a guy that I think was a good pickup, a good smart pickup, a nice guy to have in house. Nobody that you're obviously going to have to overpay at any percent or time of his career. He just does the little things on the ice, will stick up for his teammates, and can chip in and scoring every now and again. He's a nice player to have on your team. Um, Blackhawks brought back Vinny Hinostrosa. 
Uh, th- that seemed like a pretty... They got rid of Brad Morrison, who... They brought back a guy who has some familiarity with the team. They're a team that's kind of fallen a bit down now from trying to get in it. But uh, they still have a chance uh, bringing in Hina Stroza. Right now, the Blackhawks are 41 points to 45 points of the Nashville Predators. So they still have a chance. They brought in a guy that they're familiar with. Uh, that was a pretty smart trade. But I think the best trade... Uh, was the Panthers actually dumping Conley's contract on them just because Conley's a nice veteran that won a cup in Washington, had a very solid year his first year in Florida, then in this weird age has sputtered a bit, but is a good veteran to bring in. You replaced uh, Carlson, who you sent out as a young defenseman, with Riley Stillman, and then you brought in a seventh-round pick and brought in Henrik Bjorkstrom, excuse me, who's right now playing overseas and doing fairly well, is a guy that was a top prospect that uh, Florida really believed in to come in in the forward court, and he's a guy now that might do best from a change of scenery coming in in, in Chicago and being able to really kind of grow and nurture and get Chicago to kind of get him moving in the right direction, uh, that could be really good for a young prospect like Henry Bjorkstrom's career. And then Riley Stillman, uh, they've been giving guys like Kolnick and other defenseman chances. I'm sure he'll get a good opportunity there in Chicago as well compared to playing in the Panthers system where they actually have a pretty solid outline defense right now. So that seemed like a good trade for both. Lucas Walmark's kind of like a younger pitlick S player that just brings energy. He's a guy that's more toned to be on a team that I think is really going for, which is the Panthers this year, rather than a team like Chicago that's doing better than expected a surprise team but needs more veteran intuition and bringing in Conley is great. And then you got a solid young defenseman and a potentially a very good young forward if you can get him going in the change of scenery in Henrik Bjorkstrom. But moving back one day from April 8th to April 7th, the Islanders acquired two players. One that was obviously already with Lou Amarillo, grew out the beard, had to shave it again, um, going back to Lou Amarillo and Kyle Palmieri. Another in Travis Jack. both completely seem like Amarillo players, um, obviously are coming from the Devils, and uh, both obviously fit tremendously right into that system. Zajac said with his quote, um, that he just wants to win a cup, basically, paraphrasing. Um, they traded A.J. Greer, Mason Yopst, and a first-round pick and conditional fourth is what the Devils got. So that's a pretty um okay haul for the Devils. I mean, the Devils, I don't think you're going to get anything overly abundant, but you got a pretty good uh, haul, I believe, personally. I think that was a very good trade, honestly, by the Devils to bring in as well because they're trying to get rid of veterans, bring in more young talent, get the team going, get the team rebuilding, and kind of bring in guys that are going to be more of the future and not need as much veterans, where once they become to where Chicago is now as a surprise team, then they might be looking for Brett Connolly's of the world and guys to add that can kind of help your locker room, but that's not where they're at right now. Um, Another trade on April 9th that was a small trade that was yesterday was Pat Nemeth, just for a fourth-round pick, went back to the Avalanche, but that's why it's interesting just because he went back to the Avalanche as a connection there. They've had Renouf play a lot of games and others because of some injuries to their defense. So that just seems like a good small pickup by the Colorado Avalanche due to the connection of playing in Colorado for two years and having familiarity there. Uh, the Panthers got a demon um, when it went to a Brandon Montour, who they obviously believe is going to go back to looking a lot better and fluent on the ice, where realistically playing in the Sabres organization is not a good judgment of your statistics. You just have to look at if the guy's putting out effort there, look at the film from that perspective of things, because that organization obviously ain't run very nicely, as again we know from Jack Eichel. Um, but Montour for a third, I think that's... Um, a good trade for the Panthers because I think they will get the best Brandon Montour. They will get the most out of him because he'll be mixed into a lineup where he has no pressure. Yes, they're on a playoff run, but with the defense around him, he has no pressure on him. He has some good veterans to help him out down there in Florida, and I think it's going to work out there nicely for him. And then Pattern, the reason we mentioned that trade earlier as we wrap up this video here, is Greg Pattern was with the fifth-round pick what went to the San Jose Sharks so they can just have a veteran journeyman defenseman at this point, but a guy that's good for your room and pattern who doesn't play much, but again, it's good to have those guys as a young team that are good for your room. And then you moved out Devin Dubnik uh, to the San Jose, or excuse me, from the San Jose Sharks uh, to the Colorado Avalanche, so he can be the backup of Phil Grubauer, who's competing for the Vezina. That seemed like a very good trade for both sides as well. It gives Alexi Melnichuk 
um, a chance if they want him to now be the backup of Morton Jones, let him mix in. We've seen a lot of young goalies take big strides this year. If the Sharks want to see if their young kid can do it, um, it gives them the opportunity to do that now, moving Dubnik um, for a fifth and Greg Patteron. But I hope you all enjoyed this NHL trade deadline check-in where I reacted to the trades that happened thus far in the league. I heard David Savard, they're working with Tampa, Columbus, Elliot Freeman tweeted out. So that might be something that happens soon. And if it does, then I'll post a video reacting to that. But this is one video, a trade deadline um, outlook and reacting to the trades this far. I hope you all enjoyed it. For Sports Fat News, I'm Joe Bork, a.k.a. Projo. Enjoy all the great hockey action. Enjoy all the great trade deadline coverage. Everybody have a great, safe, and pleasant day. Peace out.